Check out this old screwdriver. Definitely an antique and I really like it. Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John and full disclosure, this was already broken and um, I do like this old screwdriver and I want to fix it. And we're going to fix it today, but not just any old fix. Uh, we're going to do some really unique things with this. Now it's a pretty simple setup. You know, basically you've got your, your shaft. I don't want to make this into a wall hanger. I'm going to continue to use this after we're done. So this piece, I'm really not going to do anything to. The handle. I don't know what kind of wood this is. I know a lot of different types of wood, uh, but this is something that I'm not familiar with. And looking online, it's possible this is boxwood or maybe yellow birch. So it's a closed grained wood and it's pretty light. It's not, it's not oak, I'm sure of that. It almost sort of resembles cherry, but it's very, very hard. So there's no way it's cherry. Yes, I could take this handle and glue it back together and clean it up and probably make it uh, serviceable again, but I want to make this something uh, a little cooler than that. I have an idea. So the way this worked, the handle just went down in. And the only thing keeping it from splitting out the wood is the ferrule here. Which this uh, went around like that. I held that wood in compression so that it couldn't split. So the ferrule is key and the ferrule is what failed. That's why the screwdriver broke. What's interesting is it looks to me like this ferrule is made out of cast iron. Pretty unusual material choice for a ferrule in my opinion, but you can see it looks like gray cast iron, very grainy and very brittle. And it looks like it had been cracked for a while and then finally gave way because you can see the rust up here. So the first thing I want to do is make a new ferrule. So brass would be a great material to make a ferrule out of. I don't have a piece of brass that has a diameter big enough to make that. So I'm going to use this as a mold and we're going to melt some scrap brass and we're going to make a ferrule. Now I'm going to melt way more brass than I need. I'm actually probably going to cast two of these just in case I screw anything up. Now one thing when you're casting, as the metal cools it shrinks. So if I use this just like it is as a mold, I'm going to end up with too small of a piece. It won't be as big as this. And of course I want to turn it down so I need some additional uh, diameter on it. I also need to hold it together, so electrical tape's gonna serve that purpose very well. All right, I think that's gonna be annoying, so I changed my mind already. This pipe is bigger around than it is, so that'll give me plenty of excess. I marked it so that it's a little taller than that. So basically, I just need to mold that cylinder that I can pour into, that'll be easy. So I did some calculating and figured out how much volume it takes to make a cylinder that big and determined that I would need 290 grams of brass to make that cylinder. Now, I wanna make two just in case. I double that, I need about 600 grams of brass and I want an excess of that because there's gonna be stuff in here that's not brass, uh, dross and stuff that you skim off the top. So here's 800 grams of brass. So that's what we're going to be melting, but before I do that, I need a mold. Alright, this is green sand. It's sand mixed with betonite clay, and it needs some water to get it to start sticking together.
This is a no-name Amazon special. I've actually never used this furnace before. I bought it a long time ago and it sat way too long. Let's see if this thing works. The flux will melt first and go to the bottom of the crucible and protect the melted metal from oxidation. So this is taking uh, quite a while to melt actually, so I am preheating what I'm putting in in addition. This is the last piece. And it doesn't want to go in there. Oh, that looks nice. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of phosphor copper in here and that just helps the metal flow better when, uh, when you pour. Beautiful. So you can see, even with the smaller one, I've got plenty of material to make that. And uh, that's what I'm going to use. I made this one longer thinking it would use up any excess brass that I had, but it turned out I still had a little bit extra.
that this will get final fitted along with the handle so the two get sanded together at the end. And I'm leaving it a little bit thick, but I think the final result I'm going to leave it thicker. No reason to have the ferrule break again. Although, this being brass, a lot harder to break than this cast iron was. So this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, to be honest, uh, when BetterHelp first reached out to me, I opted not to choose them as a sponsor because I didn't feel they were a good match for the channel. But then I thought more about it and I realized BetterHelp kind of applies to everybody. We all have rough patches in our lives. I certainly have. And BetterHelp can be a huge benefit to people working through stress, anxiety, low mood, and other problems. And a therapist might be exactly what you need to help you work through these challenges. BetterHelp is a personalized therapy service that makes starting therapy easy and affordable. And this is especially important for us rural folks who live in the middle of nowhere. If I wanted to see somebody, I'd have to drive an hour each way, and it's just a huge barrier to the process. With BetterHelp, I can do video chat, phone call, or even just messaging, and skip the driving altogether. With over 30,000 therapists, they have somebody that's going to be able to be a good match for you and also meet your schedule. So join the over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com slash farmcraft101 to get 10% off your first month of therapy. Let's get back to work. Now we need a new handle. So this is what I'm going to make the handle out of, and that's a pretty gnarly looking piece of wood. What that is, is a walnut tree root. And uh, to show you where this came from, we're going to have to go back probably a couple of years. So this is a walnut tree that uh, I cut down probably three years ago now. And I'm going to dig this stump out and uh, see if we can turn something out of it. I probably should have done this sooner. There will probably be spalting in the wood, but hopefully there will be enough solid that I can get something cool out of it. Walnut's probably my favorite wood, and the stump should have some really interesting grain in it.
That's a rock wedged in there. Will not come out. Yes, I should definitely have leg protection on. I've been making an effort to be better about my protective equipment, and I wouldn't do this today. This was back in 2020. I've actually since bought a pair of chainsaw pants that are quite comfortable, so. So back off, safety Nellies. Check out that grain there. So this tool handle is the first thing I've made out of this walnut root, but obviously I have many larger pieces that are going to be used in many other future projects. That is just some amazing grain. It's got lights and darks mixed in. So yeah, this has been sitting in the shop drying out ever since. It looks pretty good. It looks like I can get a pretty good block of wood out of there. I can probably make more than just this handle out of this piece. Maybe some knife handles or something in the future. But I've still got a bunch of dirt on here and uh, I'm gonna take this back outside and get this thing cleaned up. Every speck of dirt I could see is gone. So hopefully now I can put that on the bandsaw and not ruin my blade immediately. This part takes a little guesswork. I'm trying to find a piece with minimal cracks that has a really nice grain pattern. Hopefully there is one of those buried down deep inside here. Still trying to find a good piece of wood in here. A lot more cracks than I was expecting to see. And then I come over to the miter saw and I'm cutting it to length, hoping that uh, I'm gonna get a good solid end here. But uh, again, found a bunch of cracks. And more cracks. And more cracks. That's about as short as I can make it. Maybe I can work with that. trying to find the most solid crack-free piece of wood in there. 
And I guess I did okay, but it was a little harder than I expected. But check out that grain. Crazy colors, quilted. That's cool. I wish I didn't have these cracks there. Or there. So I'm not crazy about these cracks, especially that one. That looks like it's about to fly off. And that has to be the back of the handle because I've got this here that needs to be the front so I can turn that off. And I've got cracks here, here. So I've come up with a plan that I think will uh, help me with this without screwing up the final product.
Yeah, it's looking a lot better. Look at that cool grain in there. So I was worried about if I use CA glue on this, it's going to mess up my finish. Unless my finish is CA glue. That's what I decided to do. You can still see the defects, but they're full, and um, it's a tool, man. I think that looks great. All right, I'm going to hit it with some 320 grit, put a second coat on there, and then the stressful part. I've got to turn this down so that the new ferrule will go on there and not destroy this thing in the process. <laughs> the profile's not exactly the same. I'm not sure how I did that. Looks like I measured wrong on the narrow part. But, uh, yeah, it's fine. I'm really not sure how this is going to go. I wish I had a little bit more length on it because the drive is coming from here. So this needs to be turned down to 0.7 inches. That big. Yeah, the middle will still have it. I may lose my drive, but it shouldn't go flying off of there. Um, <laughs> I hope. Let's see what happens. Wish I knew what I was doing. All right, I'm really happy with this. Now I need to figure out how to drill down the center of that. I have an idea. I think it'll work. Let's go see. So 
So we're down on the metal lathe because this chuck is much deeper and can accommodate a good uh, grip on that handle. I don't need to grab it real tight. I think it's surprisingly well centered. So that's where I need to drill to. Here you can see the drill bit wobbles slightly. That means I'm not perfectly on center with the hole, but it's close enough. The ferrule fits really well. So I've loosely chucked it the other way so that I can just sand the back off a little bit. You can still see my center marking lines and everything there. Okay, grabbing it with the leather really worked. I was too scared to do this yesterday. I wanted to, to kind of sleep on it and, and think about how I want to get this handle on here. Now the options are, you can use a drill and chisels and get it close so that this will go most of the way in. I want it to go to that line and then drive it the rest of the way in and let the, the wood basically hold on to it. Now the problem with that is you do risk splitting your handle when you do that. And I don't really want to ruin this handle. Another option is to heat this thing up to red hot and burn it in and uh, it's not something I've ever done before and I know that can be problematic so just again because I don't want to ruin this handle I'm not going to do that what I've decided to do is I'm going to use a drill and chisels and I'm going to work this thing until I can get it to where I want it to be and then uh, and then I'm going to epoxy it in I think that's the safest and uh, most reliable Here I'm drilling progressively larger holes to smaller depths so that I kind of match the taper of the shank. But as I get towards the thicker part, I'm gonna have to use a chisel.
So this is where doing a burn in, you know, you heat this up to red hot and then you just push it in there and it's going to burn away the wood wherever it needs to to fit. And I can see that would be really nice, but um, I don't... I don't see how the epoxy then after you do that is going to adhere that well because now you've got a bunch of wood char. You don't have solid wood fibers inside. I don't know. I don't have any experience with that. Maybe you guys that do can comment on what you think. All right, well, it took a while, but I got it to where it will go all the way to where I want it. We're going to at least clean this up on the wire wheel. And I'll straighten it out a little bit. I am going to have a problem with this. I'm not going to want to use it. I'm going to stare at the grain. And I bet on camera these lines look like cracks. And of course they were, but they're all filled in now. You can't feel them. They're nice and solid. So there you go, guys. Got this back in action and glad to have it back because uh, this is, really comes in handy. Sometimes you really need a big screwdriver like that. I don't use this as a pry bar so much as actually a screwdriver. Anyway. So the next video is hopefully going to be on this uh, John Deere engine, and it's been throwing me some curveballs, so continue to be patient. It's taken a while to get the right parts. We've had a couple of false starts and some new developments, uh, but I am working hard on this, and as soon as I can get this video done, uh, you guys are going to see it. Speaking of this John Deere and big screwdrivers, that's a brush cap, and this is on the generator. Man, oh man. That's on there. And there's the other one. Well, nothing on the John Deere is easy. I'm going to work on this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one.